Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to take information from an app and save it into a text file, and then how to retrieve that information back from the text file. Now, I just have a sample app that I created. It's just a single screen. Uh, so when I created this, I just did a new project and I selected a single view application. And to save time, I went into the nib file, the view controller nib file, and I set it up with a text label. We have three different text fields that the user will be able to enter their favorite things. Uh, two buttons that we will connect to methods that will either save the information to a text file or retrieve it from a text file. And then I have a text view that I added down here at the bottom. Right, a larger text area, and I simply replaced the Greek text that was over in this section of the panel with just the word results. And so that's all I've done so far, is just set up my user interface screen. So I'm going to take off the utility panel, and we're going to set up our outlets and actions. So I'm going to go into the assistant editor and create outlets for these three text fields. So I'm just going to select the first one, right click and drag over, and this is going to be an outlet, and so I'm going to call this one food. I'm going to repeat that, and then this one is going to be called movie, so that's going to be an outlet for movie, and this one is going to be channel. Next I'm going to have a method that will save the information, so I'm going to create an action, an IB action, and let's call it save info and then we will have a method called let's say retrieve info and then we need an outlet for our text view since we're going to be targeting where to put that information it needs to be listed as an outlet so we'll say result view and since we're using these text fields for data entry the keyboard is going to pop up so while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and create a method for retract keyboard. We want to also connect these to our retract keyboard. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to right click and choose did end on exit to retract the keyboard. And I'm going to repeat that for the other two. I'm going to choose did end on exit, retract keyboard. and did end on exit, retract keyboard. Okay, so next let's set up the retract keyboard method. So I'm going to go out of the assistant editor and go into the view controller implementation file. And I've added the skeleton here for the retract keyboard. And so we have self and we want resign first responder. And then we automatically got the skeletons for these methods, the save info and retrieve info methods. And I'm just going to move them up to the top here, again, just for purposes of making it easier to see and work with in the video, rather than having everything down at the bottom of the screen. Okay, next, to save the information, first of all, we're going to construct a string of the information that is in our three text fields. So we're going to create one long string that has this information and we're going to separate them with a comma. So we're going to actually be creating what's called a CSV text file. CSV for comma separated values. Which is a common format to use when just saving text. Makes it easy to split things up on the commas and then retrieve individual pieces of information from that. So back in our implementation file, in our save info method that's connected to the save button, we're going to create a string and let's call it result line. So it's going to be the result of all the information that the user entered. And so that's going to be an NS string and we're going to use the string with format option. 
And our format is going to consist of, now it's a string, so it's going to start with the at sign and double quotes. And we're going to have three different values connected with commas. So we're going to have a percent sign, at sign, comma, another percent sign, at sign, another comma, and another percent sign, at sign, and a double quote. Actually, before our double quote, we're going to put in a backslash n to put in a new line so that when we add more than one value, then it will put a line break in between one entry versus another. Otherwise, they'll all be strung together. And now we want to substitute these percent sign at signs with the values from our text fields. And so those will be, we'll say, self food dot text, self movie dot text, and self channel dot text. So that should create a string that collects the information from our three text fields into a comma separated value. So it'll say whatever we put in for food comma, movie comma, and then channel and a new line. Next, we're going to need another string and this one is going to represent the path to our documents directory. So I'm going to say doc path for our variable name and that's equal to a ns search path, right? An ns search path for directories in domains. Let's add that and our ns search path directory will use a constant called ns document directory and our search path domain mask will be the ns user domain mask and to expand it we're going to say yes and we add on for that saying object at index zero so that's a lot of stuff going on right there so let's break that down so we're going to be using the ns search path for directories in domains function to create a list of directory search paths and we're indicating that we want it to look in the documents folder using the ns document directory which is a constant that's given to us by apple to represent the documents folder we use the ns user domain mask constant to search from the application's home directory and we use yes argument to indicate that we want to obtain the full path of all directories found. Now we want to get this out of a directories array. And in the case of iOS application development, there's only one path. So we want to get the object at index zero, which means it's the first and only path that is found for a documents folder application. So once this executes, we now have a doc path that represents the path to where the, this application's documents directory is stored. So let's just say we wanted to see, we wanted to be able to actually see what this path is. So before we actually save this data anywhere, let's put in um, result view, right? We have a text view called result view. We're going to set the text equal to our doc path. So let's run this in the simulator and see what that looks like. So it's not going to appear until we click the save button and that's what's going to fire that method. And now this shows you where your files are actually stored when you're testing them on the simulator. So we have your user path and it's in the library folder in the application support folder for iPhone simulators and then this is an automatically generated this is an automatically generated number and then we have our documents folder. Okay so now that we see where the path of our files are located we're going to comment this out and now we're going to create a string another string that's going to represent our file name where we're going to store the results. So this is another string and let's call it just surveys and that's going to be equal to our document path 
and then string by appending path component. So string by appending path component. And what we want to do is on the end of the path, we need to put the name of the file that we're looking for. So we're going to say results.csv. So it's going to be a CSV file type. So this is going to represent the name of our file. And the name of our file that's going to save the results is results.csv. Now it's not there yet, and if it's not there, it's going to make it for us. So I'm going to add some code in here that is going to do just that. It's going to check to see if the file is there, and uh, if not, then it's going to create it. So to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to paste that in. Okay, so here's the code that I just added. We have an if statement. So if there is no file manager, and if the file exists at the path for our document path, right, if it's, if it's there, so if there is no file that exists in that document path, then it's going to create a file called surveys, and it's going to be an empty file. It's not going to have any contents or attributes. So what's an NS file manager and default manager? I'm going to click in here and open up the utilities panel, and we get our quick help reference, and it enables you to perform generic file system operations. So this file manager allows us to work with files, and our default manager returns the shared file manager object for the process. So when we click the Save button, it's going to go through, grab this information, find the path to where the files are saved for this application, and check to see if it's there, and if it's not there, it's going to create it. Next, we need to create a file handle, and we do that with the NS file handle. And you can see that it's a class that's a wrapper for a file, and you use this to access data associated with files. So we're going to create a file handle. We're going to give it a name, and we're going to call it just simply file handle. And we need to set it up to be equal to an NS file handle and use a file handle for updating at path. So file handle for updating at path. And the path that we want to put in here is the path where our survey file is. So we'll say that that is for surveys. So now that we have a file handle object that refers to our file, before we write to it, we want to seek to the end of the file. So we're going to say file handle seek to end of file. So it'll go to the end. Then we want to write some data to it. So we'll say file handle write data. And the data that we want to write is what we created up here, result line, that contains the information from our text fields. So result line, and then we're going to be a little more specific in how we want it to write or how we want it to save it. So it's going to be data using encoding. And it's going to be the string encoding that we're going to use is the next step, UTF-8 string encoding. And we're not going to worry about lossy conversion. And then once we've written information with the file handle, it's good form to close the file so that it actually writes the data and saves it. Okay, and um, let's just put a little NS log statement in here so that we know that it got that far. Okay, so I'm going to run this and let's see what happens with it in our simulator. So we'll put in a couple of things here and we'll save. And we got down here as far as it's saying info saved. And uh, one more finishing touch we'll do on this when we save is when we hit save, we'll also clear out this information so that if we wanted to do another survey and save it, we don't have to go back in and delete that. And that's fairly easy to do. We'll go in here and say self.food.text is equal to an empty set of double quotes. And we'll do that for the other ones as well. Okay, one more test on that. So we'll try those. Save, info saved, and then it clears out these values. Okay, so now we've got two entries in there. So let's work with getting 
the information back out of that file and displaying it in our results. So back to the implementation file and we'll be working in the retrieve info method and so that will be triggered by the other button. Now in order to get the information from the file we're going to need to access it so we'll be able to reuse some of this from this method. So we're going to be able to grab our string for our document path and also where our survey results are being stored. So I'm going to copy that and we'll paste it in here so that we'll have access to the path and the name of our survey file. And now we're going to check to see if the file exists. We want to check and make sure if it's there. And again, we're going to use the file manager, the default manager, and we're going to look for file exists at path. We want to see if it's actually there. And the path that we want to use is surveys. So that completes our if statement section. We're looking for the file manager, looking to see if our path and our results CSV file exists. And then if it does, what we want it to do, we're going to create a file handle. And again, we're going to call it file handle. And we'll be using the file handle for reading at path. And now we need to specify what that path is. And again, it's for our surveys. Okay, next we need a string for our survey results. And that's going to be equal to an NS string, a loped, and a knit. And we were going to initialize it with data. And the data is going to come from our file handle. And we're going to be using available data. And again, our encoding is going to be the UTF-8 string. So it's an NS UTF-8 string encoding type. Then we can release the file handle so we can close the file. Once we've read it in, we're done with it. And then we can put the results into our result view and that will equal our survey results. And I'm getting an error here. I forgot to put an asterisk. Okay, so let's see if this works to bring back the information from our file. So if I just click view and so nothing happens. I'm going to pause this and go back in and see where my mistake was and I'll come back. Okay, I know um, going back up in here where we're actually saving the information. So if the file doesn't exist at the path for doc path, doc path is just to the directory that didn't include where results.csv was. So this should actually be to surveys. Surveys is the doc path plus the file name, so it wasn't saving this information. Okay, now I'm going to try running this again. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to come in and delete this application so it doesn't have any pre-existing data or anything in there at all. And that's one way to clear out user preferences too, just by deleting the application completely. Okay, next I'm going to run this. So it will be a clean run, clean build and run with no pre-existing information. So I'm going to start again and we will save this and then I'm going to tap view. All right. And so now it is able to save. I don't think it was able to save before. And then we actually are able to access the content of what's in that CSV file. So if I add more data and view, then we have the next line showing up in here and so on. So that's an overview of saving information to a text file and then retrieving the information back from the text file. And in this case, we're just displaying it in a plain old text view.